You want me? Okay. Obviously, um, thanks for being here. I know some of you were out West and others weren't, but some of you are watching from out West as well. Um, obviously it's a, it's a great day for the Celtics. Um, and, uh, a day we've anticipated here over the last week or so, and we're all really excited about, um, you know, so I'll be the first to, um, you know, welcome Malcolm and Danilo to Boston. Uh, obviously when talking about, and I'll, I'll start right here to my right with Danilo when talking about Danilo and all that he's accomplished in his 14, 13 years, 14, 14 years in the NBA with his ability to um, impact the game, especially from the standpoint of scoring the ball in different manners, different ways and shooting his ability to make tough shots on the block, his ability to draw attention and make the right reads and play. Obviously we felt like he was a great fit in addition to our team um, in helping us, you know, hopefully continue to strive for those next steps. Um, and we've had a chance to spend time, all of us over the last, 24 hours or so and you know it's it's really clear how um good of a fit both these guys are and then with malcolm i've known malcolm since he was a uh a high schooler recruited him a little bit unsuccessfully which is a pretty typical tale since i've been here i've said that before and um but glad he's here now uh, a person that can make plays for um you know, as a, as a guard with the ball, as a guy that's playing off the ball, a good shooter, and um, just a person that really understands how to, how to win. Um, and obviously fits right in with how our guards um, can play on the defensive end and, and guard up um, with his size and strength. So we're excited both those guys are here. I think you'll find them to be not only um, really good players and really good fits, but as you're introduced to them today, uh, I think it'll become really obvious um, when you listen to them that they're about all the right stuff and they're excited to, um, you know, help us strive for, you know, the step we didn't quite take this year. And, you know, I know that our guys that aren't here um, that are all over the place right now that are on our roster, were really excited when, um, you know, it was decided that both of these guys were going to join us. So I guess, do you want me to pass it or we just go straight to questions? Okay. You guys got off the hook. No opening statements. No. Hi, Danilo. Um, you could have, it sounds like you could have taken more money to go somewhere else, but you chose here. Uh, what was, what went into your thinking? Why did you make the pick? Um, many many reasons but um you know when 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 you think about the the celtics uh, i grew up with with my dad since i was a little kid being a celtics fan being a larry bird fan so when when the celtics uh, came on the table it was almost like a no-brainer um and you know you walk you walk even in this facility you look around and you see what's going on around the banners and and the, the history and and everything that our, the Celtics are about, um, it was a uh, it was an easy choice. How did uh, you know? How much were you able to borrow from Larry Bird's game? I mean, you just grew up watching all of them. Uh, yeah, I mean, the first um, I tell you this story. The first meeting well, when I got drafted by the Knicks, uh, Donnie Walsh was the GM. The first meeting that I had with him in the summer, he gives me this uh, CD and it's a Larry Bird CD. And he says, look at these, look at these videos uh, every day and see what you can do. Uh, of course, Larry Bird is a legend. Uh, and so it's not, uh, it's not easy to, to do the stuff that he was doing. Uh, but I looked at, the, at those tapes every day. And so, um, like I said, is is uh, is is great to be here, and uh, and I can't wait to to wear uh, those colors. And Gentlemen, I should have introduced Danilo's dad. Vittorio is here as well, and he um, was a heck of a player in his own right, as many of you know. Um, and it took this guy a few years to be able to beat his dad, um, from what I could, from what I learned last night. It was it was pretty pretty easy at 15 years old. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, Jared Weiss, The Athletic. Uh, just for both of you guys, uh, you're stepping into a situation where you could be part of a team that almost just won. How does, how does this feel as far as the phase of your career where you feel like you can be that kind of that last missing piece to be part of a championship core? You got it. Uh, um, you know, for me, uh, I'm in my prime. Um, I'm 29 years old. Uh, you know, I experienced winning at a high level in Milwaukee for my first three years. Went to Indiana, had a solid season, and then sort of two rough seasons. Um, so this is everything I've wanted, you know, to, to be able to get back to this level, to be able to compete with guys that want to win a championship and that are all in, that want to sacrifice to win. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's very fortuitous for me to be here. And um, it's, I think it's the perfect time for me. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, at, at this, this stage of my career, um, when, when, when you think about basketball, you think about uh, winning, get that ring. Um, and so, and he's a constant, constant thought that, that I have every, every day. Um, is that time, is that time for me? It's always been about winning for me. Uh, even when I was younger, uh, it was always about, winning and so uh, especially especially right now when you know when you get at this stage and uh, when you're 30 33 about to be 34 it's it's what what you want um and it's something that you're gonna that you work on you work work for every day uh, brad but for you ownership has been talking for a while about willing to dive into the luxury tax when the moment was right when did that conversation start with them about when you figure this team was ready to make that dive and how did you present them these opportunities? Yeah, they've been great about that this whole time. You know, um, it has been uh, whatever we need to do, whatever we need to do to try to um, maximize our opportunities. Um, and we actually, we obviously have a, um, a really good core, really good team. Been fortunate to make um, these two really good additions. And we wouldn't be able to do that without that commitment from them. Um, and so, you know, we're obviously thankful and, um, you know, I think that that's a, you know, that that's been had the green light the whole time to, to make those calls. Taylor Snow, Celtics.com. Malcolm, just what was your emotional reaction when you found out about the trade and how have you kind of digested it over the last few days, just knowing the opportunity that you're stepping into here? Uh, I was extremely excited. Um, the possibility to put on a Boston Celtics jersey. Um, my grandfather passed a few years ago, uh, was the biggest Bill Russell fan, um, was the biggest uh, Auerbach fan, and I love the Boston Celtics. Um, so to be able to play here is definitely a blessing for me um, in his honor, for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, I, it's, it, I've told everybody I've met in the organization, it's an honor to put on this jersey. It's a privilege, um, you know, the most historic, a successful um, sort of high reaching organization in the league. So I'm, I'm extremely excited to be here. I wanted to ask both of you, you've experienced many games here in TD Garden, just the atmosphere. Um, how much are you looking forward to experiencing that on a nightly basis now? Sure. Okay. Um, it's, I, I think about it, I uh, dreams about it. And so yeah, I'm glad that now is is reality, and I can't wait to start a season to to you know to experience that finally as a as a Boston Celtic uh, player and not to play against the Celtics. So it's uh, uh, it's an amazing atmosphere. Everybody you know knows that, and uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. You've said that you expect to come off the bench. Um, what, what's your mindset about that? Obviously, it'll be a different role for you after being the leading scorer in Indiana last year. Yeah, you know, I, I want to come here and, and sacrifice to win. I think everybody on a great team, everybody sacrifices. Tatum, Brown, all of us take, you know, to have to take things off our plate and, and sacrifice a few things. Um, so for me, I don't, you know, for me, I think Gallinari too, we're, we're trying to add, we're not trying to take away. Um, this team ha already has something special. They've made it to the finals. They already have a recipe. And I want to add to that recipe, not, not disrupt it. 
Um, so whatever this team needs from me, whatever uh, email needs from me, whatever my teammates need from me, that's what I'm gonna do. We have some Zoom questions as well. We'll start with the first Zoom question from John Corrales. Hey, Brad, um, you just said that you have the, the, the go to spend, um, and obviously the team has spent to add uh, Danilo and Malcolm, but is there a high end to, to the limit of, of what you can spend? Are there moves that maybe you would make in a, in a different situation that you can't make now uh, considering the tax bill? No, I mean, I think the bottom line is, is, and, and obviously we have, you know, not only a, a trade exception now, but trade exceptions that we can use again towards the trade deadline. Um, and that's all about just finding the right deal. If it's the right, the right trade to be made. Um, we have the green light to do that. So no. Next question is from Bobby Manning. Hey, Malcolm, uh, for you and Brad, Brad mentioned his uh, recruitment attempt to you when you were going to college and uh, for Brad as well. Uh, just how, how long have you two kind of wanted to connect and, you know, um, you know, join each other, not only at the high school level, but through your NBA years now, starting with Malcolm? Um, you know, I he didn't want to connect bad enough that he was going to come to college. So obviously it was probably more me wanting Brad, Brad recruited me hard um, at Butler when I was coming out of high school. Um, and we had already known his reputation. He had already gone to the, to the championship game um, and final fours and really done everything you can do in college. Um, so I, I, knew what type, I knew what type of coach, uh, what level coach he was already. Um, but I, you know, I, I went in a different direction. I chose UVA. Um, but my, my sort of infatuation and, and want to play with someone that had such a great basketball mind and clearly was a fantastic coach, uh, never stopped. And then once I got to the league, you know, it's hard in the league. A lot of the time, unless you're, you know, one of the top, you know, 10 guys, you don't control your fate. Um, you can't decide who you're going to play for. So, um, you know, to have this opportunity to be under Brad's wing and, um, you know, to be in the organization that he's, you know, really running, I know it's going to be well run. I know it's going to have a great culture. Um, I know it's going to have great leadership. Um, and I know the coach, whoever it is, and the teammate is going to be a, a great coach with a, with a great mind. So, um, like I said, it's a privilege to be here um, and to be, you know, somewhat reunited with Brad. I would say this, 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 this one feels pretty obvious. He said all those kind words, but then he met Tony and it was over. So we're glad he's here in Boston, though, finally. <laughs> Next question from Adam Himmelsbach at the Boston Globe. Hey guys, uh, to both of you, what, what kind of stood out uh, watching the Celtics make that run to the finals this season and particularly the personnel they did it with and what ways do you think kind of your unique skill sets will help you complement it? Um, you know, for me, I think uh, watching that team, you, you sort of watch them get better and better over the season. They started off a really talented young team. Um, that was good, but not great. And, you know, I think they had a rough month, maybe in January, uh, didn't play as well as they wanted to. And then you saw them really come together. I think you saw Al Horford, um, you saw their vets really pull those guys together and turn themselves into a great team um, and, and rally. Um, so that's, you know, that that's something you look at as an opponent and you admire, because it's extremely hard to bring really talented young guys together on one page and have them compete and beat the best in the NBA, beat, handle the Milwaukee Bucks, handle the Brooklyn Nets, um, you know, make a run like they did. So for me, I want to come in here and I want to uh, add, I want to add, you know, my, my skill set, my playmaking, uh, my ability to play off the ball when, when guys like Brown and Tatum have the ball um, and my, you know, ability to read the game, to be able to close games, make good decisions um, and defend really one through four. I think can, can be an asset for this team. Yeah, for me, it's, you know, like, like Miles said, um, to watch the team last year play the chemistry, how hard they played, um, the system, you could really see how um, 
the the system and the guys were able to get better like Mal said every every game every month and do the run that they had it was uh it was amazing to see uh how, what i can bring or what i do i mean i've, I've been doing it you guys know I'm, I'm i've been a pretty versatile player so i played in different system but i systems but i always uh fit it well um, and so there are a lot of things that i can do defensively and offensively that um, I'm sure I can I can uh, add and, and and you know gel right away in the chemistry uh, with the team and with the guys that we have. Also from the Boston Globe, Gary Washburn with a question. Go ahead, Gary. Associated Press. Um, both you guys have had different journeys in the league. Uh, Denzel, Denzel, you talked about reaching your reached 34 years old and kind of getting older in the league. Malcolm, you were kind of talking about being in your prom. What if your time in the NBA thus far, both of you, just taught you about how precious moments are in the NBA and kind of seizing opportunities when you get them to kind of capitalize on them? Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's very important. Um, when, when you realize the, the, the team that you got, the situation that you got, and that's something that, for example, is it happened to me like uh, two years ago when, when I was uh, my first year in Atlanta that, you know, you have a young team uh, and they 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 played uh, last like three, four seasons, even more losing season. And all of a sudden you play one season where you get to the conference finals. Um, those moments and I was telling the guys, all the young guys every time those moments, you got to use those moments uh because like all the young guys were like you know you after we lost it was like yeah next year we'll be back I said no we're here now you, you need to win that game now uh, you need to win that series now and they will realize it once they get older uh but when you when you are there you definitely need to uh uh capitalize in in those seasons and those moments I, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, he's, he's been doing this basically twice as, as long as I've been doing it in the league. So I think he has more experience. Um, but from my, you know, six, seven years, uh, winning in Milwaukee, it was, it was easy to take it for granted. You know, we, my first three years, we got better and better and better. Um, and then I went to Indiana and we were a good team. And we sort of, you know, went, went downhill uh, those three years. Um, so winning, it's, it's easy to get complacent. It's easy to uh, not feel like you have to take advantage of the moment, but you do because this league, everybody's making moves every summer. Every Everybody's getting better. Everybody's working on their game. They're new, young, hungry players that are coming into the league every year. Um, they're coaches that are scouting you differently every single year and, and players that are scouting you as well. So, um, you know, it's you have to continue to get better and take advantage of these moments. And I think one of the tricky things is sometimes you don't know when it's your moment. You don't know, like for that Atlanta team that Gallo was on, I'm not sure anybody realized they were going to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but they took advantage of the moment. But for us here in Boston this year, we know we, we have a chance to really do something special. So, um, you know, it's, it's really up to us to hold each other accountable and to take advantage of this moment. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll try to go back to Gary Washburn again. All right, we'll, we'll go on to Byron Robb. Here's a question uh, for Brad with the, um, you know, obviously making the big addition of these two guys. Um, you guys seem to have a pretty deep roster at this point. How happy are you with just the complexion of the roster right now? What are your, you know, priorities moving forward for the rest of the offseason just to fill things out? Yeah, I think, I mean, you, you, you guys have, have, have been around me long enough to know, like, I, I really value how a team fits together and how it should function together and, and how, you know, if everybody brings their strengths to the table, how it accentuates each other. And obviously we think that these guys really do that. I think we're, I think we're deep. I think that, um, you know, we have a lot of options. One of the things that I thought um, as we went through the playoffs and the different challenges, you see some series are better for some guys than others. 
But one of the things that I thought would be good is if we gave ourselves more options with a quote, small lineup. Um, obviously we're not small when you talk about Danilo and Malcolm, they're big guys, but, um, but they're very skilled. And so they're able to space the floor and play that way. And it just gives us even more options in certain scenarios and certain substitution patterns. And even, you know, sometimes to start games, start halves if you want to. Um, so to add from here, I think, you know, we, we talked about, obviously um, it's great to have the green light to continue to add in any which way we need. But one of the things that I'll continue to focus on is adding without taking away. So I think that this is, we do have a deep team. There will be the need for everybody to give a little, which is important. Um, but I think everybody here is ready to do that because I think that they got a taste of what it's all about um, in June. And it's pretty clear what we want to do here moving forward. John Corrales. For Brad and for Malcolm, um, were there any conversations uh, after this trade with Marcus Smart? I know when you bring in someone of Malcolm's caliber, uh, it could be perceived as a threat to the current starting point guard. Uh, I know that Malcolm, you've spoken a lot about embracing a six man role and that's gonna be the role, but what was the process of uh, letting Smart know about this, this move and, and what the roles were gonna be? Yeah, from my standpoint, it's what I just said, John, like everybody, everybody knows, you know, what the goal is and everybody knows that in order to achieve that, we have to become deep, flexible, be able to play a lot of different ways. And every single guy that I talked to and I talked to, you know, all of those guys and Marcus included within, you know, an hour of the trade, they're all jacked. They're all excited. They're, they're ready to roll. I know Malcolm, you and Marcus go back a little bit or have a connection somehow, but uh, this is about, this is about winning. And I think, you know, one of the things about Marcus's tenure as a Celtic, it's been defined by winning in the playoffs every year. And um, we all know that to stay the same, um, as Malcolm said, everybody else in the league is trying to get better. And everybody else in the league as you're making your run is reading about you making your run. So you've got to you've got to meet the challenge by improving, and we've got to do that individually with our own work and our own development. Um, and we had to do that by addressing the roster needs. And you know we're really excited because, like you've heard these guys, as I said earlier, these two really get it and they really know what it's about. And um, and the guys that we have in that locker room that are back know that too. Yeah, you know I want to echo the same point. I think Marcus is uh, one of the biggest winners that we've that we've seen in this league um and I think that's why Boston loves him I think that's why this organization loves him um and it's hard to really put your finger on uh you know what what it is about him but he's a winner he knows how to win games he's going to help you no matter what and you know this move I think bringing me here actually helps him I'm gonna push Marcus um I'm gonna embrace him he's gonna embrace me we're gonna push each other um I, I really think we're actually gonna play really well together I think we have different skill sets um, but I think we both want to win so bad. It doesn't matter. Um, all the other stuff is distraction and noise. I think we're going to come together and really make this thing work. In the back here, Ian Steele, ABC6 Providence. Question for the players. Malcolm, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on teaming up now with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? Uh, they're great young players. Um, I think, a, you know, there's a lot that can be said for them. Um, but they've proven who they are over these past, I think, two years. Um, they took the both took huge steps during this last playoff run um, and really, you know, sort of seem into their their names and their abilities um, in this league. They have a lot of respect and they're uh, the guys that I think this this team leans on the most. So um, my goal is to come here and make them better. Um, like Miles said, great uh, young players with with experience. You don't see you don't see uh, a lot of players, a lot of great players like them uh, as young, but they already have a lot of experience. And so, um, you know, of course, when you look at the team, um, what, one of the reasons why uh, I came I came here is is them. Um, and so uh, I talked to them already. Um, and like I said, I'm excited 
and and we all here uh, working for them, working for the team uh, to make sure that that we we all they su succeed and we all succeed. Okay, filling in for Gary Washburn, who has texted his questions to us. So first one is from Malcolm. Um, can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Jalen? Yeah, you know, um, Jalen's from Atlanta. He's a few years younger than me. Um, I remember once I got to college, hearing about him coming up while I was at UVA. And then I think maybe my junior, senior year, we played Cal when Jalen was a freshman. He had a lot of hype. He had a lot of, you know, clout. And uh, we knew, everybody knew he was going to be a top three pick in the draft. And we played against each other. I think we both played well. Um, but that was really my first glimpse at seeing him. I knew he was going to be special. Um, and then, you know, coming up in the league, we both got, Jalen was the, was I, th I believe the third pick. And uh, I was in the second round, but Milwaukee and Boston, we always had these battles in the first, second round of my first couple of years. Um, and me and Jalen would match up against each other. So it's, you know, I've, I've always watched him sort of up close and from afar, really, really clearly work on his game. I mean, I, I can tell the steps he's taken every year um, on his game from just being a very dominant, explosive athlete to actually being a very skilled player that can think the game as well and play both ends. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it, it's finally a privilege to, to be on his team. We really connected uh, during the pandemic uh, when he led a protest in Atlanta. Um, and, you know, we're, we're also both on the executive committee for the PA and uh, have connected on there. But, you know, we were on one phone call during the pandemic, which he said that he was leading a protest in Atlanta. And that's when I reached out to him after the call. And that was really when the first time we probably connected on a personal level. Um, and then we, we marched together in Atlanta. And that's when I really got to know him pretty well and um, sort of realized what he's really about. And for him, it's bigger than basketball. It's about life. Um, it's about being an activist. It's about being a good person. So um, always been a big fan of his and I'm mean, really excited to play with him. Two questions for Danilo. The first one is, can you talk a little bit about adjusting to a bench role when you got to Atlanta? Um, yeah, I think for, uh, you know, for a player is never, especially the, you know, the, the, the minutes that I was play, playing, the player I was is never easy, especially mentally. Uh, but it's something that at that point, something that uh, you, you, I accepted it and mentally you got to get used to it. You got to accept it. Um, and I, I thought, you know, it was uh, at that point of my career, it was a move that I decided to accept and do. And I think I did a good job uh, in those, those two years as, as a bench player uh, in Atlanta. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you got to adjust and you got to be a pro and whatever, whatever you need to do, whatever needs to be done, you got to do it. Uh, especially as a, you know, vet, as a leader of the team, um, uh, you, he's not just coming from the bench, but you got a lot, you got to do a lot of other stuff uh, that comes into uh, leadership uh, when, when you play a game and when you approach those season and you have to handle all the, the, the guys in the team. Um, and so it was, like I said, it was, I had to adjust. It was a process, but uh, it's something that happens to a majority uh, of the players. And his second question is a little bit of a sore subject around here, but can you talk about the 10 three pointer game you had here in Boston? Was it me? Yeah, it was me. Yeah, yeah that was you. Um, I mean, gr great game, uh, but the you know we I'm I'm glad that we we won that game, and that's that's something that when 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 you guys when we talk about stats, and I had you know some great games with amazing stats, of course, but did did we win that game where I, I had those ten threes? Yes. If we if we didn't win, it would have been a, just a bad a bad game. That's the way that I see it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was great to, uh, to win, to break records for the franchise, for the NBA, I think is, you know, the only player that's that 10 threes coming from the bench for the NBA and, uh, nobody ever made 10 threes in the Hawks history, something like that. So it was, it was a great game, uh, but we won the game. That's, that was the, the most important thing. By a lot. <laughs> huh? Uh, I don't remember. Do you remember? Do you guys remember? 
We all remember. I mentioned that was game you? last night, didn't I? Oh, probably was you. <laughs> yeah, probably. Bad, was. bad scouting report. Yeah. Bad scouting report. I mean, why would we guard you? <laughs> Leave him open. Let him wear himself out by making everyone. <laughs> Final couple of Zoom questions. First one from Rose Pavone. Hey guys, uh, this question is for Malcolm and uh, for for Danilo. Um, what were some of the? Have you reached out to some of the recent players uh, you know, outside of you know? you know, from the core guys or anyone in general? And if so, what were those conversations like with the uh, with current Celtics players, your new teammates? Yeah, you know, um, uh, Jason reached out to me. Um, I immediately reached out to Jalen uh, as I knew it was going down. Um, I actually talked to Al before because um, me and Al have a relationship back in Atlanta. Um, but really, Jalen and Al, they really were excited about the opportunity to have me on the team. Um, those two guys really know what I'm about because uh, we have good relationships. Um, and they're, you know, they're ready to embrace me and, and welcome me into the family. So we've, I've had some very good conversations. Yeah, same, same for me with the JT, Jaden, and, and Al. Uh, talked to them already. Um, and, you know, we're we all excited. Uh, and we all can't wait to, to start uh, working together. We'd love to be able to answer all your Zoom questions, but we'll close with this one from Bobby Manning. Hey, Brad. Uh, so you send out Daniel in this trade, and that kind of leads a little bit of a um, big man gap um, where he was last year. How do you kind of picture filling that spot? I know Luke's back, and you got some extra roster spots here. Yeah, I mean, we'll continue to look at, again, what, what adds to our team. Um, you know, I think ultimately – you know, though we though we started big most of last year um, with Al and Rob, we we oftentimes would play one of them. I think, like I said earlier, we're we're better set up to play quote smaller um, than we were just because of the size of these two guys sitting next to us, um, and got a lot of different options there. But um, we were really high on Luke. Uh, we've been really high on Luke. We thought he had a, a terrific G League season. And, you know, think that he can step right in and be a, a, a passer um, and, a, and a ball handler and a mover and a screener and a roller um, when need be. And we'll probably add um, one more person uh, that can play in that area. But, you know, we're, we're really believing in, in Luke as, as not only depth to, you know, obviously fill out the roster, but also be ready to help us and help us win. Um, you know, I think he's at that, at that stage where he can do that, but we're still looking and we'll still add at least one more body, um, you know, at that, whatever we call the five position nowadays. Thank you, Brad, Danilo and Malcolm. We will conclude the audio part of this uh, press conference. We do have a uh, Jersey presentation that we'll have part and we'll uh, do that right now. Thank you, everybody. Stand up and do the picture. Got to hold that thing up. Eight 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 eight. Yes, sir. Flip it. Yep. Turn it over. <clears throat> Got him. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, and everybody on Zoom. That concludes this press conference. Thank you.